Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk number 68. Where's that 68? There it is. Look wow. at them graphics. Oh, how, do, how have we done this? Without Sue, time? we could not do that. Thank we you, We could Sue. not. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to continue with our Audio Masters Roundtable for Tech Talk this week. We've got Cliff Zellman and Uncle Roy and Andrew Feliciano and Jordan Reynolds, all guys that know the stuff we're all supposed to know as voice actors. So if you got a question, throw it in the chat room because these guys know how to answer it. So if you're live. To, if you're live. Otherwise, you're going to be writing and it's going to go whoosh. Why are they ignoring me? <laughs> exactly. And if anyway. you're not live, then, oh boy, am I full from that Thanksgiving meal. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Voice over body shop. Audio Masters round t- uh, Roundtable. Tech Talk. Coming up right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, greetings and good evening or good afternoon or whatever time you're watching this, especially if you're watching right now. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. That's right. Tech Talk, baby. Tech Talk. And right now we're going to be joined by the Audio Masters Roundtable. George and I like to do this you know, every year when we can. We haven't had a chance. During the pandemic, it was, you know, we just forgot about doing that because we were just busy trying to do what we could. And, uh, I know but, it's amazing how long it's been, but uh, I'm so glad we uh, we did it again. This, these are the OG OG guys right here. Yeah, they absolutely are, and they uh, they're the ones that get your audio. They're the ones that you know, you know. There's Produce. probably only a handful of people on the face of God's green earth that actually understand what we're talking about. Uh, you know, people who are just getting into voice acting and they're learning their uh, the, the technology and stuff. It's really, really important that they not just watch YouTube videos from everybody, you know, who is like, oh, here's how you build a booth and here's how you do that. There are professionals out there and they're here with us tonight uh, talking about it. Uh, But, you know, to lead things off, it's important to know that this is really what George and I do professionally. I'm a full time voice actor, but I also help people with their home studios and I've been doing it for a long time. And George is, you know, you were really one of the first people to really, you know, talk to people about, you know, getting home studios up, up and running. You worked with a lot of people here in Hollywood. And, uh, that's because I worked with Don LaFontaine, like in oh, 2005. Yeah. And he said, nobody does this. <laughs> and when Don LaFontaine tells you nobody's doing this voiceover home studio tech support stuff, you listen. That's Absolutely. why I'm doing it. <laughs> so if you want to work with the guys that actually know what they're talking about, uh, aside from these guys who are, you know, 
it amazes me some of the stuff that some people throw out there. Oh, you got to have all this uh, heavy equipment and because that's what the engineers want. And we're going to talk to some actual engineers here. and They're going to tell you exactly what they want. Plus, we want to have, uh, you know, your questions answered. But if you want to work with George, where would one go if they would like to learn from you and be supported by you uh, professionally? They no, you head to... on over to georgethe.tech. Yes, that's the complete domain, uh, georgethe.tech. My name is my address. You can check out the drop-down menu on there for all the different types of services I provide. Some of those are as simple as a sound check or as complex as let's design your dream recording studio in Cheyenne, Wyoming, whatever. Sure. We're, we'll, we'll be ready to help you. <laughs> um, and uh, we've got a team of folks also here to support if I'm booked up. Um, a couple of them are here tonight, actually, specifically Andrew Feliciano uh, also is on when I tech team. And Dan Leonard is in there, too, because we work together um, when there's an emergency and I can't be reached. I've got backup. That's an amazing thing. Yeah, my beeper um, so. goes off. <laughs> it's not always easy, <laughs> but we try our best to uh, deal with emergency tech support uh, requests when they do come up. But that's it. And Dan, what's your home on the web for tech support and it, everything home studios for voiceover or vice versa? It's pretty simple. It's homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yeah, I got that URL. Um, if you go over there, you'll see the services that I offer. And, uh, you know, I do a lot of, I like teaching one-on-one. -on -one. If you really don't understand what you're doing and you know, you're a talented voice actor, you really want to get into it. What I'll do is make sure that if you're auditioning, your audio is not going to be the thing that's going to prevent you from getting work. So, uh, you know, we'll teach you all the things about, you know, you know, mic technique and getting your room set up properly and how to set levels, which apparently no coach out there seems to understand in any way, shape, or form. And uh, George and I end up mopping up after a lot of these people. So uh, go on over to the homevoiceoverstudio.com. Most importantly, if you've got your studio set up and you want to get your audio analyzed, scroll to the bottom of the page. Although we're reworking the page, we're going to move it up to the top of the page. And that's my uh, specimen collection cup, which gets filled up with all sorts of interesting audio. And I will give you a very thorough analysis for $25 uh, and tell you your audio either is outstanding or it, like we need to probably talk a little bit further. Uh, so go on over there. All right, let's proceed with our Audio Masters Roundtable and introduce our guests once again, if you were here with us last week. Uh, Director of Talent Development at ACM Talent Automotive, Cliff Zellman. Cliff, welcome back. Thank you. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Voiceover coach, killer demo producer, and home studio expert at Antland Productions, Uncle Roy Yokelson. You Uncle Roy. can never be too safe with the pandemic because, you know, we're, what are we, 6,000 miles away yeah. apart? So you can take your masks off now, kids. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> What's the right EQ curve, Uncle Roy? To oh, to get up and safe for the <laughs> It depends mask. on how many layers you got on there. Okay. Now it sounds like a 58, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Our other panelist, uh, a voice actor, audio ninja. I'll have to ask him about that. Uh, celebrity impressionist and demo producer, the one and only Jordan Reynolds. Jordan, welcome. Hey, good to be back. It's been a long time. All righty. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got the owner and general manager of an actual Hollywood recording studio, Voice Tracks West, Andrew Feliciano. Andrew, welcome to oh, our show. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Glad to be Jordan, here. I want to hear your imitation of Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I he forget said, it. He said celebrity. I might. I yeah, might. He, said, yeah, he said celebrity. Oh, damn. No. <laughs> no, no Cl Cl Cliff is just always so happy, and I am he happy. just always has so much passion yeah. when he talks to you. You know, yes. you never feel bad after talking to Cliff. Oh, and man. same with Uncle Roy. He, he makes me very happy every time I hear him talk. Oh, that's very he talks good. about his bagels, and uh, he brings me great joy. He's one of my good friends. And he doesn't good. suck. No. <laughs> <laughs> but mark your script, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. My bad. One of the things, yeah. One of the things that uh, that that George and I wanted to talk about tonight uh, was people doing their demos because everybody produces demos. Roy, you produce demos. Jordan, you produce demos. 
Andrew, you produce demos over VTW. Cliff <laughs> definitely produces <laughs> demos because he produced some of mine. When people are getting their demos together, because somebody called me the other day, somebody I don't like very much, and hopefully he's not watching. Um, and he, and he's like, well, what does it cost to do a demo? I did one like three years ago, and will someone do one for like 200 bucks? Uh, no. I mean, what, I mean, what does a demo cost these days? I mean, at least 1500 to get a good commercial demo done, right? Uh, we're up in the 2400s. Yeah, we're right. kicking it up a little bit. Uh, and from Jim the, Michael also. You know, demo, demo production, a lot of people don't realize the amount of time involved. I mean, we're producing six, five, six, seven full-on spots. We're licensing the music. We're spending hours and hours in editing, music selection, uh, mastering, which a lot of people that you know think they can do their own demos have no idea what mastering is, um, sequencing, writing the scripts. Um, I'll tell you, you know, I, I do five to six to seven normal broadcast spots a day, but it's the demos that we, you know, shh, don't tell my clients, but it's the <laughs> demos that we really dive into. And it's a legacy. It's something that's going to last a long time. Music licensing alone is not cheap. And we do this to protect you. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. And it's a, it's a huge responsibility, too, because we're saying we're going to make you the best you can be. And we're going to give you a tool to help you in your career. It's a lot of work when it's done right. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's too many shortcuts to licensing that done. music, as Cliff was saying, is ridiculously expensive. But yeah. be, that's why we have the entire <laughs> whichever libraries you have. Warner Chapel, I think, is what we're mostly using. Um, there are others, but they're constantly adding. I don't think I've ever done a demo where I use the same piece of music as somebody else's demo. And script choice wise. I interview the people and find out what makes them tick, and they tell me about their three-legged dog, and then I write a you know dog food commercial about their limping dog or whatever, um, because the spots should be about you. Uh, you have to be ready, and we all, <laughs> we're all going to say, if, if you're not ready, we're not going to do it. We don't want your money. It's a waste of your time and money. It's a waste of our time. Our time is valuable. Our name is important, too. We, that's right. We put our name yeah. on your, and we're not going to produce a crappy demo and put our name on it, and then yeah. there, there we go. We had a, an interesting discussion where somebody brought up the term uh, demo ready. What does it mean to be demo ready? And I think it's very simple. Book ready. When you're ready to book, you're ready to do your demo. And, and no time, if you're not ready to book, you're not ready to do your demo. But how does one you know, get out there and put their work out there? If they don't have a demo, they coaching, have to be coaching, ready coaching. to make the demo. What's that? Say that, Cliff. They have to be ready to make the demo. You know, with with the huge amount of of uh, resources online for people to really, in a very short amount of time, can really build up their skills. They can build up their knowledge very, very quickly. What they can't build up is their portfolio. So, guys like us, we're here to help you build your portfolio, and it's legit. Um, you know, the spots on your demo should look like broadcast spots. I don't do my demos, like I said earlier, any different than I'm doing uh, broadcast or demo. But um, it's l let's let's get your portfolio up to the level of your skills. And if your skills ain't there, then your portfolio shouldn't be there either. There's plenty of time. Yeah, Jordan, what do you think? What exactly was the qu oh demo ready? Like, what does yeah. that mean? <laughs> How do you get out there? How do you get out there? How are you, how, do you, how are you considered demo ready? Pick well, one. Well, well, give, give us <laughs> your definition of demo ready. Um, it, it's I, I totally agree with Cliff, and and but how do you gauge that is where it wildly varies. But my opinion is, if you've gotten the, a blessing right from at least one and preferably two respectable uh, coaches slash or even like you know just some sort of um, a uh, voice talent who is working at a high level in the in the genre that you are attempting or that you want to get a demo made in if you can just uh, just a handful of people not five or ten then you're just getting everyone's too much opinion but um just with that that small range if it, 
you need to get some sort of gauge and be like, hey, do you think I, like if I was auditioning with my current skills skill set, do you think I would have a chance to be in, be in the considered pile? Am I, is, is my skill that good, right? And if you're getting into that pile, if, you know, again, it's all subjective, that's what's so hard, but if they would, if they say yes to that, then you are definitely ready to make a demo. Um, but not, I wouldn't just trust that one coach you worked with for two years and they might love you and say, yeah, now we can make a demo. Yeah, just, just get maybe one other opinion, run, do some read, do some reads for them and see how it goes. Andrew, I know you guys do those yep. over at VT. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. Do a lot of demos. Um, I mean, just echoing everything that's said here and, uh, and also there there is a time if you've been working at it and and you feel you're ready like you've worked with coaching you've done that and um at some point you need to make a demo and we've done some where where someone was maybe they've coached a good long time you know they're they've maybe hit a point where they're but they want to get out there and they really want to do it they're ready they have the money um, you know, they're, they're serious about it. They're going to continue working on it, you know, and, and we'll move into that demo cautiously. Um, uh, and cause at some point you need to make a demo. You don't need to wait till things are perfect. And it can be, this may be your first demo that you will maybe update as you get better, maybe add a spot, take one away. that wasn't the strongest. Um, and you know, that, that's sort of an approach there too. Cause they're, they're, you know, you could wait too long. Um, cause really, um, you know, getting out there and starting to audition if it's pay to plays or things like that, you know, that's part of the work. Um, and uh, in, in practicing doing real things, um, you know, not just sort of reading the same script over and over again, you know, um, I, it's not like it's not the same as practicing guitar where you can just kind of noodle. Um, it, it's similar. Um, and so if you can get out there auditioning, but there is a base level that you want to be at um, before you make that demo that you're ready enough um, and, you know, Potentially, maybe don't wait too long either. You know, get that advice, you know, from the coaches you're working with. Yeah, definitely think, be, be working with a coach. I think we'll enough see. people know. Oh, it's just me. Yeah. Uh, I think enough people know to be aware of the demo mills who say seven coaching sessions and a demo or two demos. Uh, who's to say that after seven? Could take a year. Could take more. Could take less if you're really, really, really good. If you take direction, if you have a big range, um, but be careful of somebody trying to sell you a package. I don't do packages. Cliff doesn't do a package. Jordan doesn't. Andrew doesn't. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Be ready with you know. Gotta have your demo. I, I know there's people out there that are like, well, I've you know I've recorded some stuff. I've done a few commercials. Make sure you get permission and you know get that down. But you know, if you've been able to get hired without a demo, that's pretty good. Uh, but I think people forget that this is a, an entrepreneurial business. It ain't up to you other people to find you work. you got to find it yourself. Uh, here's an interesting question, since we're all wearing our headphones. Uh, Noel the First asks, I would love to know what everyone's favorite headphones are, not just for sound, but comfort. Let's go around the horn here on this one. Uh, Cliff? My favorite headphones are Focals. Um, I'm wearing them now. I think they're built okay. I think they sound incredible. I also have Focal monitors. When I take my headphones off, it's the same thing that I'm hearing through my speakers after a very slight little, you know, a couple of minutes of, of ear adjustment. But I think they're very, very comfortable. They're not too tight. I have a pair of uh, Sennheiser um, over there in the corner that I just squeeze my head. I, I can't wear them too long. I love Focals. I think they sound great. But, but, oh my God, have you guys heard the Neumanns? $500 Neumann headphones. Oh. Yeah? Oh, oh my God. I put these on. I said, this is the most comfortable pair of headphones I've ever put on. And they sound unbelievable. They're expensive. 500 bucks. Well, yeah, for 500 bucks, they better damn well sound yeah, pretty they good. These are, you know, these are 350, 400 bucks. Nothing is like those those Neumanns. Oh my goodness! You win the lottery, or you win a lawsuit. I don't know. Check them out. They are unbelievable. Has anybody in the group heard those? Used them? No. I'm, you think Jordan? I'm intrigued. Yeah. What do I think? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They are definitely amongst the most comfortable I've worn. Mm -hmm. um, I love how they sound generally. Like it's mm -hmm. a very pleasing sound, mm -hmm. but 
accurate, not so much. It's it's got it's very it feels very nice to listen to, especially it voice sure does. because it's got a nice scooped out mid range. Yes. and the so, top end so is so they're in, heavily colored. Yeah, not I would, not I would heavily probably covered. Say they are. Yeah, but but they're uh, you know so good for maybe mixing or doing some music stuff, but and maybe just doing like general like listening for noise floor and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But if you're gonna be making EQ choices, right, or like oh do I have too much sibilance? The top end actually is not very bright at all. It's it's really smooth. So I like the top end. Mid range is too scooped, so it it sounds like it might be a little too soft and muffled than it really is. And there's a little bit too much of a bass bump, which makes your booth <laughs> resonance sound a little too heavy. But I'm a, I'm kind of a freak. But uh, that's mm -hmm. I love how I love them though overall. Well, we but they're just that. not accurate, in yeah. my opinion. Sounds like that, you're describing my DT 770s when you describe those, or my uh, DT 770s. Don't get me started. Don't or my like 990s. <laughs> There's three endorsements for Buyer Dynamic yeah. DT 770 <laughs> Pro 80 ohm or 990. Is it Pro uh, and? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. What are they? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Pro. Yeah, these are 250 ohm. Um, and and we just uh, the difference being that these ones are open, so we can hear what's behind us as when we're engineering. That um, took a little getting yeah. used to yeah, it yeah. Be, because I was used to these the uh, cost? ancient. I was used to these ancient Sonys that are 35 years old that the, just sit on and that sound great. But the one band in the yellow, the yellow, oh, the, the AKGs and the. Uh, I have those. Yeah, the open air. Go to the radio station and there'd be somebody's makeup on them. But know, and, John, <laughs> John from Long Island Voice Over Takeover has very sensitive uh, earlobes or something, and so these squeeze him too much. So everybody started t then talking about the Audio Technica ATH. 50x m50x so i bought them based on okay i put them on they're a little bright so i said well brighter isn't always better unless you're getting old and you can't hear highs anymore or something uh if i need to brighten something i don't want to wear headphones that are already bright because then i won't do it mm -hmm. and ann ganguza said she texted me and said i'm sad that you don't like my headphones <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, yeah, Jordan! What are you wearing right now? Those are the Jordan. You have the Sennheiser yeah, these, uh, these, these are the, or what are these? These are the no. These are the six fifties. They're open back. Mm. Nice. They're, yeah. they're totally open back. Meaning, um, they don't put to the voice actors listening. Meaning, literally, sound when they are speaking, and I hear them in my headphones. And when I'm speaking, a lot of that is bleeding out, almost as if not like it's a speaker, but like it's just kind of leaking out. Whereas closed back headphones like the Audio Technicas that Uncle Roy was talking about, mm. these are closed back, which are much more preferred. It's, well, highly for preferred when recording, but recording for doing also. But if you want to use these, your room, you also not only does sound leak out of it, but the room leaks into my headphones, oh, so I can hear my AC no. a little bit on. Right, very transparent. So, the, but that's what's great about them. They sound more realistic. How we our human ears hear sound in the world, we don't. We don't hear everything like through this, which is what a closed back headphone does. It just cups it off. Yeah. So you have to be in a quiet room to listen to these on. Recording with them is much riskier. I have everyone quiet right now. If I turned it up, we, I would get feedback and a Ooh. squeal. Yeah, so interesting. Yeah. That's, that's what's just where I'm right now, just because they're honestly, these and probably the Neumanns, these are probably more comfortable than the Neumanns. Really? These are more comfortable than the Neumanns. Yeah. I, I love how comfortable Probably Me? not good during a music session where you're overdubbing and you're playing back music nope. and the music is leaking out into the not microphone. At, at least yeah. it's the same song. I use these for <laughs> production. If, I, if, I'm doing, if I'm doing like mix checks or um, like lately, actually, my, my new acoustic panels are like four months on back order, which is why my room sounds so bad. So I, from the, the mixing I've been doing, I've been relying on these yeah. because they're really, they're not colored. They're very smooth across the board. Jordan, yeah, I feel are those like panels from a, a three-letter yeah. acronym company. What does uh, the acoustical panels? Are they coming from a three-letter name yeah. company? Oh, well, yeah. There's, okay. there's, <laughs> there's, there's two three-letter companies. At least, yeah. <laughs> George, did, did you say you thought that the seven uh, seventies were were flat or colored? Um, I, I think they're a little bit colored. I think they're a little bit more hyped on the top end, but it, you know, it's. Uh, Jordan's done a lot of critical listening. I've done some. I think whatever it is, you have to be comfortable wearing them, and you have to just trust them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And if you've learned, like I've been wearing this pair of headphones, and then the ones that I had before, which are really, really thrashed and worn out, since I worked for the Eagles Football Network in 2001. 
So I just know these dang headphones yeah. so well. I'm so familiar with them, you know. The, and he's got some, what are those, the HD25s? What are the, the Sony, these, those are the Sony 100s? What are those? Things? Yeah, that's the, it's it's the V, this is the MDR V150. Mm. Yeah. That they Great. don't make anymore, but they, not oh, comfortable, man. But they sound good. No, they were comfortable. Really? The, it's not too tight. When you bought the later ones, they they made the band tighter. But the, oh. these are comfortable and sound great. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. See, My, no, me, mine are geez. mine aren't yeah. so tight. Now, now me, I I got my Harlan Hogan's here. They're they're flat. They're comfortable. I can wear these for two three hours and I don't even notice. I love them too. They're a little lacking in the low end. Well, yeah, and the fact is, is I don't mix music and I don't do a lot of mixing. I just I hardly actually ever wear headphones. When I'm recording, I don't wear headphones. Good. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to hear myself in the environment in which I'm working. If you happen to live in a home with a lot of other people or somebody else who does not want to hear your studio monitors, yeah, it's good to have a good pair of headphones. These work great for, for me. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, I always I generally mix using my monitors, and, and so I don't worry about it too much. Let's see what other questions we got here. Um this is a good one from Douglas Voice Guy. What a great name. Uh, any new finds or discoveries regarding sound treatment, both homes and rental apartments, in the way of material, technology, etc.? Anybody seen anything new that they're, they're particularly excited about? Or <laughs> Consider what we've been saying about how people's you know, acoustics don't seem to be so hot. I've, about, I've been how... curious about the, these felt things. I don't know if you've seen these. Like if it's like, yeah, it's like these tiles, and they have something in them, and there's like felty, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know. I feel like they're maybe aimed at offices more than things, but um, I I don't know anything about like them, you know, how how they work or if they're good. Oh oh yeah maybe yeah yeah I think yeah totally. Um, I don't know what's the uh, what's the deal? <laughs> these are a prototype from source uh, uh, from Studio Bricks. Oh, they're doing. They're trying to print their own in-house, and mm. these are made out of um, PET. So that's yeah, they look kind of, They look felt. Right? You put they, their face up to it and go. Tch, 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 to see what kind of. Yeah, they're felt now. Lick it, George. Lick it. They. The nice thing about these is right out of the box, zero odor. Oh, good. Ooh. zero. That's no off casing. No, that's a plus. Zero odor and. And um, performance-wise, I haven't been able to try them other than have they ship me literally that one panel. <laughs> so Touch it. They wanted you to smell it. <laughs> well, they did. They wanted me to smell it. Unfortunately, they shipped it in the same box with a foam panel that they're also producing. And the smell of that mm. was in the box. So I was like, <laughs> oof. These are supposed to have no odor. So once I unboxed it and left them alone for a while, picked this one up, and it is, yeah, Absolutely, George, non nonsense. -cient. George, uh, what about a little plug for your tri booth there? Odor? Is it over odor free? Is that what you're asking? No, <laughs> no, uh, no. Environmentally, I don't mean can you recycle it. No, I mean how does it how does it make it sound acoustically? It's it's pretty yeah. it's pretty dead. It soaks up a lot of the room reverb time. Um, it's not a hundred percent. So if you have an extremely reverberant room, you may not find you're getting quite enough out of it. If you're in okay. an average room or an average bedroom or living room or situation, it does a very nice job. Um, I find that just throwing another comforter, blanket, whatever, on the floor and then putting it on top, that's the last percentage that you most people would need. And it does a really fine, fine job. And that's just a very heavy-duty moving blanket type treatment system and, and and cover your desk if it's a hard surface anything you that's know, real hard and real towel. close to the mic yeah yeah put a towel or a blanket on your desk yeah, yeah that's one of the biggest things i hear in um a lot of booths and my mine included like my voice i have a lot of mid-range eh, hi i'm jordan and <laughs> uh and it just it my voice and hard surfaces don't go well together so uh i have a glass window i cover the glass door with a curtain when i go in and my monitor is the smallest I can get it, and I'm, I'm the, as far away as I can be and still see the screen. It's only 22 inches. So if you have, like, some big 24-inch or 27-inch, which is really – they're all affordable now in your booth. And your mic, if, if, like, here's your mic and then your screen is right here, you know, if they're that far apart, and you're only a little bit further from that mic, 
depending on your, vo your voice type and the other hard surfaces in your recording space, that monitor can create a, a, too much liveliness and too much of a harsh ring to it. And so right. I suggest people like uh, literally my screen is tilted down facing the rubber on my desk. <laughs> so, That's but I can cool. still see it. It looks weird just looking at it, but I've gotten used to, to I can read the text just fine because it has a good viewing angle. But when I tilted that, that made a huge difference. Yeah. Uh, also your ceiling, back. your ceiling is not your friend. No. Unless no. you've got, you know, there, there you go. Clouds. See, Cliff, Cliff's got the clouds. So his voice does not hit the ceiling and bounce back. And yep, there's same, the Focal monitors. Can we see? Let's see. We got so a ton we more questions. Off. Should we go into Can't speed round? Oh, one <laughs> more thing, real quick, talking about uh, to, to piggyback Jordan. If you're using a music stand and you have a, a hard, flat surface, throw a towel over it. Yep. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm. And you can I, I tilt like, you can tilt that back a little bit too. That 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 sometimes helps. It, towel it. it. When I listen to critical yeah. mixes, I've got two monitors. I throw towels over them, turn them off, and push them as far away as I can. That's why I like the the, the, you know, the music stand that doesn't have a flat surface on it. You just sort of yeah. hold it out and yeah. it goes. It's right cheaper too. Yeah, ten bucks. Uh, yeah, we got lots more questions here. We're going to do a speed round after this, <laughs> and we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with our audio masters roundtable with Uncle Roy. Jordan, Andrew, and Cliff right after these messages. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Let's face it. If you're a voice talent, not everyone in your family or close friends really understands what you need for your home voiceover studio. You want a what? Well, VoiceOverEssentials.com has the perfect answer when it comes to birthdays and other gift-giving for us voiceover folk. New, for the first time ever, after countless requests, VoiceOverEssentials.com is thrilled to offer the VoiceOver Essentials gift card. You pick the amount you want to give, and they take care of the rest. The recipient will receive an email with their digital gift card and gift code to use on anything they offer on VoiceOverEssentials.com. Give them or give yourself the gift of getting exactly what you want, like the Harlan Hogan VO1A microphone, the Portabooth Pro or Plus, Harlan Hogan Signature Series VoiceOver Optimized Headphones. A lot of what? Go to voiceoveressentials.com and click on Shop and Gift Cards and choose the amount. Gift cards now at voiceoveressentials.com. Thanks, Harlan. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Well, it's that time because there's a camera on me to talk about source elements and the tool set that they bring along to the table. Source Connect being the main one. That's the one that the vast majority of voice actors want to have available in their tool set. Um, they, they make many different systems and tools that allow productions to work collaboratively around the world. And it can be used on the post end for playing back mixes to the client who's someplace else and even multi-channel or surround. And it can also be used to just simply record the voice talent, maybe you, from a long distance away directly into their timeline. Now, something that's really cool about Source Connect that's been in there for a really long time, but most don't know about, it's called Q Manager. And what Q Manager does is it records you, the talent, automatically in the background. So you're actually always being recorded during the session. You don't have to worry about rolling a backup. Q Manager is doing it. And what it's doing is uh, doing a few magical things. Not only is it recording you, it can also automatically fill in the audio. If there is a network dropout in the middle of a session, 
which is pretty magical stuff. It just happens automatically in Pro Tools, but it can also completely replace the audio track in the session with the raw or unprocessed, non-lossy AIF or WAV version of the audio, and it can do all of that totally automatically. It's pretty amazing stuff, and I wish more sessions would use it because it just makes the talent's life all that easier and the production flow is so smooth. Anyway, if you want to get started, go over to source-elements.com, get yourself a 15-day free trial, get your iLock account set up, learn how to make it work and be ready when you're called upon to do that big gig that requires Source Connect. Anyway, thanks a lot. Let's get back to all those questions. It's time for rapid fire round. This is Ariana Ratner and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem, VOBS.TV. And we're back hey, we're with back our with Audio Masters, Masters Roundtable. Roundtable. Somebody's, Somebody's got, got their, their echo, echo on. 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 Okay. Get your headphones on. <laughs> well, hello, hello. We've got hello. Cliff and Uncle Roy, Andrew Feliciano, and Jordan Reynolds with us on our Audio Masters Roundtable. Still got time for a few questions here. We're going to do a speed round, as George and I like to call it. Um, this is something we talked about last week a little bit uh, from somebody else who's one of those two handfuls of people that actually know something about home voiceover studios. Yep. Uh, Jim Edgar, uh, who's on YouTube. Speaking of connecting, how much are we, you guys seeing Session Link Pro or Session Link Dub showing up? I know I'm doing a lot of dubbing work right now, and some of these companies have, it seems to have their own platforms. Uh, they're big companies, so it's like karaoke and stuff. But are you guys seeing Session Link Pro or Session Link Dub or any of these any of the other things showing up now? I think Connection Open is one of those companies where you can do remote uh, looping or ADR. Uh, I know Andrew Danish has been using it a lot, and we just got to get the studios and the clients uh, to embrace that particular platform besides uh, Source Connect or the things you're mentioning. I think yeah. Session Link Pro has gained traction in Europe. Uh, it's a German product. So German clients are going to probably use it more. Um, but anecdotally, very, very rare. Yep. But I had to troubleshoot a client last week with an Apollo. She was trying to use mic channel two of the Apollo to run into Session Link Pro. And long, long story short, it didn't work very well. We just physically plugged her mic into channel one of the Apollo, and everything went great after that. So, um, no, it's, that was the first time I think I've troubleshooted a Session Link Pro session um ever i i love it i love session link pro i think it's i think it's one of the best uh web-based products out there why do you say uh, that um they've i mean so they they have a few products that all basically do a similar thing but they aimed it like it at like dubbing um you know and they, and the way that they integrate the video is really nice um and you know where you can kind of have um you know i'm mean, going to get sort of technical but you know they have a way where Hush you can mouth, sp split audio or um, or have the guest and the talent talk to each other with the studio or, you know, so there's, there's a lot of flexibility in how, how the, the, the studio can sort of manage what, what people are hearing and what you're sending to who also with sending video. Um, and you can have, um, or for instance, I've done it with zoom on for the clients and session link pro for the talent. And I can separate those things but then have video shared on both of them. Um, and, and yeah, I, I think there's been a great, it's one of the better, it's one of my favorite of the web-based um, uh, platforms um, uh, out there. And, you know, it's not, it's not cheap, it's a professional tool, but it doesn't cost anything for the talent. So how much, how much is that? Uh, I think it's maybe 40 bucks a month, which is not, ex it's not, no, that. no, maybe more than that. Maybe I forget the dub, there's different tiers because there's a few different versions of it. Um, but it's very reasonably priced, right? For for a, if a studio is using it, um, uh, um, yeah, I feel like it's been a good um, uh, a good product. Although I know they did go down right when I was using it one day because it was they must use the Microsoft Cloud because it was the same day the Microsoft Cloud went down. But um, <laughs> uh, but it was only a couple of hours, so that'll do it. Fascinating that we're actually talking about this now, since it wasn't that long ago when it was like, when's ISDN gonna die? And now it's like, it, who's using ISDN a whole lot anymore? I mean, we still have it, but 
we have we use it as a phone patch. It's like yeah, um, I have five zephyrs and like only two of them have lines in them. But uh, yeah, it's dead. Like it my really my phone. zephyr hasn't seen electro- electricity since like the first Obama administration. Here's my <laughs> zephyr museum. Oh, yeah. Yeah. graveyard. <laughs> Got a yeah. whole wall of them. I didn't did get mine at Goodwill. Pack. I couldn't get anyone to, to buy it or even take it. I just dropped it off at Goodwill. It's really <laughs> worth it. <laughs> you know some nerd walked in there like it was into CB radios or something? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, this oh, is cool. This. I'm going to open it up. looks really cool. <laughs> you know, for 10 bucks, if you need a two-inch, a, a two-space rack filler. There you go. <laughs> and you still have the buttons. All my buttons have popped off. I, oh. Now, here's what I want to do. I'm going to I want to hook them up um, and put them in the lobby, but hook them up to all the rooms with a feed of just what ma- the master bus off the off the mixer, just like whatever, and and so you just see bouncing. Yeah, that would be cool. What's and you'll see like what's happening in the rooms, you know, because you can just turn them on and you can send them signal, and then mm-hmm. the meters will just bounce. Um, I, uh, there you go. Yeah, hey, so that, those that's, meters that's aren't cool. cheap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. still need the uh, ISDN subscription? You, no, you wouldn't. You can just turn it on without <laughs> anything plugged in, and it'll, for, it'll take you eleven hundred bucks a month. Just, quite just a go like this, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. I still have my Gentner. Uh, I do too. Digital hybrid phone patch. It was probably fifteen hundred bucks new, and it weighs a ton, and it works great. I just yeah, don't still use it. Sounds uh, like a phone. Here's a question from Gerard Maguire. Uh, hey guys, external preamps versus audio interface preamps. Are they worth it? <laughs> <laughs> Don't Who ask wants to nail that. Don't ask, it don't ask Cliff. <laughs> yeah, it depends. It depends. Exactly. Yeah. The, the stuff today is, is pretty darn good. You know, you, you can get quality preamps and interfaces. Um, uh, you know, the, the I, you know, a big question was A to D converters, you know, and, and ADAs, you know, or, or DACs, actually. And I think the answer is, you know, from mid range up to a billion dollars, they pretty much sound the same. So you really don't need to have like and people like oh, I got to have a Grace 101 or I've got to have you know these big expensive things. I, I find that them. none of, none of this stuff is going to make you perform any better. No, but man, pride of ownership of a Grace is <laughs> awful cool. That, but I, you can I, also I, put you can also put it on your website. Look what I have. No, I have two yep. Avalons, so you know yeah. I'm, I'm a bit snobby when it comes to that stuff. But I use my Avalons for for music as well. You know, yeah, so. that's what I think. A lot of this stuff. Here's the thing. All of this stuff, the majority of the equipment that we use as voice actors, none of it was designed for voiceover. They're not sitting in some boardroom somewhere going, you know, we need to have a voiceover mic. We need to have a voiceover of this. You know, we're we're an afterthought. I think the podcasting overcame that, too. People are like, oh, we got to have a podcasting mic now. Growing up, in, growing up in the studio, and I think Cliff can agree with some of this, Poor, poor us. All I had was tube 47s and tube 48s. Noimans. That's it. Yeah, a wall of them. None of them were designed for voiceover. They were meant for, to capture music. Yeah. All of them. Yeah. I, and I think t- people tend to get confused by that because they'll, they'll talk to recording engineers who record music and like, well, this is what I use. And they're like, right. well, I've got to have that. But having it isn't the same as the 20, 30, 40 years of experience we have knowing how to use it. Yeah. Yeah. So, hybriding the... The old with the new, you know, is is very valuable. Yeah. I'm 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 one for two. If you if if it's part of your experience, and and you and you love it, and you love gear, and that gets you going, um, and can afford it, do it. Um, it's right? du- it's Dumbo's it does, it magic feather. Yeah, it <laughs> does it doesn't take away from needing to perform as well. You have to do both. Of right. course, for sure, right? Of course. Um, but but if it's if that's something you know, if you're a gearhead. And, yeah. and that's part of your experience, then then go for it. Get the good stuff. Learn how to use it and and perform well. Number but, one. Um, yeah. Uh, those those are those are first. You know, number three would be, um, uh, you know, the gear. But, um, yeah, have, but go for have, it if you want to. Have one of us dial it in for you. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Well, yeah. that's why we're here. Yeah. Uh, J. Horace Black asks, specifically for George, because you were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned an inexpensive webcam and stand for helping to get the eye line more centered when doing zoom sessions. Do you have links for those items? Unmute. But Unmute, he has a mute George. Button. I'm going to find my mute button. <laughs> there it is. Found it. 
Um, I haven't I haven't updated my links page in a while, but I will uh, make a pledge to do that tonight. Um, and so if you go to homevostudionow.com, that is my horror show of a link page. But you can go there, and everything I usually recommend is on that page. And those will be on there also, uh, I promise. So That's yeah. great. I would like to know what that is too, George, because as a voice actor who attends a lot of Zoom workshops, um, I love my fellow voice actors, but man, a, lo a lot of you out there, <laughs> I know it's hard to get webcams in the right spot, but some of your webcam angles are ridiculous. Like, I love y'all, but you, like, if you have someone like, you know, I, I, this is just sitting in my monitor right here, but if you can find a way to Velcro, yeah, like the top of your head, like, but not even that, like I'm talking, you'll be in the frame, but some voice actors, it'll be like, and it'll look like this the whole time. And then they're like, they're looking up their nose. Like they look like a little kid. There's this one, there's this one guy, he always looks like a little boy and he's probably in his forties, but he's just like this because his camera's like mounted to his ceiling or something. Just try to get it at eye line. It, it, it just looks so much more professional, but just a lot more natural, right? For you to engage with the the casting director, like the Depending people you're trying to get hired by. Just try to make like get, just get a decent light, and and I, I can't wait to hear what this this stand is that George has because I well, will this, happily recommend. This is my eye line camera. I, I I just rigged it up real quick, and yeah, it's just a twenty five dollar arm that you can clamp to the desk, and then clamp your twenty dollar webcam to it. And there's a million twenty dollar webcams mm -hmm. now. Um, and this, yeah, this is a $20 webcam. It looks Color's great. not as accurate as the other one I'm using, obviously, but it's sharp. It doesn't focus. So you don't have to worry about it auto-focusing. And, um, I'm telling you guys, there's a, there's a million $20 webcams on Amazon, but I will, I will link the one I'm actually, uh, using, try to make I it I think easier. we all look great on camera today. We do. <laughs> Talk to the green dot. Anyway. Uh, Instead Jim of staring at yourself. Yeah. Um, Trinity is pagan. There's an interesting one. Um, from YouTube, any recording software for Linux that you can recommend? I certainly don't want to use Mac, too. <laughs> any, any of you guys into Linux at all? Well, I, like, I have a Linux hat. Yeah. I, think that, <laughs> I, like I like that. I like my I'm Linux sure hat. Audacity works on Linux. You're driving a Linux, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, that's a, a Lexus. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, Audacity. Audacity <laughs> works on Linux. I suggested yeah. Reaper oh. in the chat. Reaper, yeah, yeah, Reaper. Reaper. Yeah, Reaper works too. <laughs> is is Reaper Linux? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here's the thing. Reaper's th cool. Yeah. Reaper I, I mean, Mac's I, cool. I know a lot of people use yeah, Linux and stuff. I like, but I like are, are, are using uh, are using Reaper, but yeah. but you know, it's like, well, I'm a snob about my my operating system. They all sound the same. I don't quite get that. Uh, sh second part of her question, tossing up between Rode NTG5 and the VO1A voiceover mic. Well, I'm talking on a VO1A right now. And I sound at least as good as you guys, I think. Um, NTG5, George, is that, you're using, what are you using? That's, That's the shotgun, right? Yeah, which one is that? That's, this is the NTG5. Okay, yep. well, she's comparing you versus me. What sounds better? <laughs> Sorry, we're, we're both fight, we're fight, both fight, using fight. some processing, so it's going to be tough to really make a good judgment call on that. But um, okay, I'll I'll I'll, pl I'll play. I'll switch off my processing. All right, this is just the mic raw. Now you're in my left channel. Oh yeah, yeah, now you're out of phase. <laughs> I've, I've been meaning to I've been meaning to address this. This is going to be in my review for the Personas Eureka, but I mean Personas Revelator IO24. This sounds happens. good though. I don't know why this happens when I turn sounds off. Phase. The processing you would think turning on processing would cause weirdness but if i turn it off that's what happens turn it back on and now it sounds normal again it's, it's yeah. left right in the middle it's the, again it's the ms thing going on it's really weird yeah. that it does that on that channel um but uh yeah but it's, it's not uh, cool with music the road ntg5 is a very nice alternative to a 416 it's not quite as bright and crispy uh, so good. i have mine hyped up a little bit to sound a little bit more 4160 um but uh it's a darn darn good mic if you can get it if you can if they're in stock and if they're but on a, not on a boat how much what's harbor. the price of that versus the thousand dollars for the uh, 416 uh these are this is a 500 hundred dollar mic generally unless you're paying a price gouge price on amazon because mm -hmm. it's not in stock or something yeah i i haven't said but this this might look i look is looks 416 but it's actually the cinco d2 
And I kind of bought it to try it, and it's uh, you know, it's pretty good for two hundred fifty bucks. Center, yeah, right? it's, it's kind yeah. of flat. Yeah, it's it's yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, it's similar, but it's yeah, yeah. But it's go been Jordan. it's been fine. For, I want to hear this. Things. Go ahead. Jordan, go, go ahead. For it. Okay. All right. I'm I'm gonna keep it real. Please. I, <laughs> well, I know you will. Like what George said, and and it sounds like what Andrew's saying too. It's the Cinco D two. This is nothing against the, it's for for two hundred dollars. It's a fantastic sounding mic, but there are some comparisons out there that are like, oh, it's pretty much a four sixteen. I cannot hear the yep. difference, and it's just. Nope. And I'm not yeah, just no, saying for not. my snobby audio ears. It just no. It they they're, just because they're both shotguns and they're in the color black doesn't. I know it's not why they're saying that, but it reacts a little different. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. It yeah. has. Um, this is the best way I could describe it. And I've I've had probably four or five audio clients who um, they've got a console with me and they want me to optimize their sound, and who have this mic in a great sounding room, right? From varying rooms, different voices, female, male. And all of them have had the same theme, which is, it. the best way I could describe it is that it just sounds like there's like a light paper towel over the whole thing. It is just so like. I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the yeah, best way yeah. I can describe it. And it's I like lack flat. of transparency. I yeah, I, but I like neutral, right? And transparent, I'm all, that's all I talk about all the time. Like when I teach in my course is like, you want flat, neutral. But there, it is just so like it doesn't even take EQ as good as I would want it. I, I even mixed a demo someone I agree. at it. Anyways, I can, so it's not bad. I just don't think I just want people to th- not think they're going to get really close to a four sixteen sound because it doesn't yep. have the cut and the bite and the the the, the clarity the, that a four sixteen has. The, the reason you doesn't. use a four sixteen, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah this is, this room out. I'm in is is an, a space people do auditions out of, and so it was like you know so I was like oh that's a great place to try it. But <laughs> yeah. for the money, yeah, yeah, for sure. The you know, is I think they're terrific for the money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For for but, a shotgun mic at that price, they're yeah. super quiet, but they just have they just so they're just really dull. They're just really yeah. dull. Yeah. For that price, if you don't have to go shotgun, if you're gonna go for in that two hundred dollar range, I would get the uh, Stellar X two. It's a large yeah. diaphragm condenser, so it's gonna I take up more of your room. But that mic for the price, oh, sounds so good. It doesn't the have. Self- yeah, self noise is a little high on that, but is separate it? from that, no. Oh, yeah. I need to I need to get one of my hands on one. I thought the samples I've heard are really. Oh, uh, I'll give you mine. No, just... <laughs> no. Speaking I like, of rapid, I like ra- speaking of rapid fire round, shall we try to squeeze in one more question? Yeah, let's yeah. see one here. Uh, There's someone from rapid. Seeing as all of you are demo seconds. producers, is a great question here from Gerard McGuire. He says, uh, "Demos, the fashion for VOs has changed." The non VO voice over is the non voiceover voiceover, okay, is often requested. Often you see don't sound like an announcer or relatable guy girl next door. Have you demo guys had to change your direction for the new fashion in announcer voiceovers? I mean, I have I have a, a regular commercial demo, which Cliff knows, and I have an announcer demo where it's the, the styles are very, very different. What are you guys doing? What, what what's really the hot thing that people are trying to get done right now, as far as demos are concerned? Cliff. Well, first of all, r- rule number one: the read is determined by the script. All right, it depends on what you're talking about, and it depends upon the genre of, of voiceover. Um, I think that I have seen a lot of sessions where the client says, "We want, we want conversational. We want boy next door. We want this. We want that." And as the session progresses, okay, that was great, but can you hit this a little bit harder? Okay, that was good, but can you be, give me a little rise here? Can you give me a little bit more than just that conversational read? So there's, you know, uh, wh- whether they want to admit it or not, there's always that, especially if we're talking commercial, we have to be compelling. We're selling something. Uh, we want you to get ex- excited about it. If I'm going to talk to you about something like this, you're not going to get that excited about it. Yeah. So, you know, depending upon what, the script calls for every read is valid be it announcer automotive goodness gracious you know please um but covid has has softened a lot of what we do um we're not really hitting it hitting you quite so hard we're a lot of the spots that i'm producing and writing are what 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 can we do for you how are we we here to help you um but again i i think the general rule is the read is dictated by the script Andrew, um, yeah, the the you know obviously we've all heard that on the scripts the you know you know converse you know conversational non announcer it's like and but I don't know I call it kind of voiceover conversational right which is not quite conversational it's not the 
it's not the super super soft like just real 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 read which you know a good voice actor can just give that and that's often not what they want um, but the voiceover conversational you know you're selling something but it's casual um and uh um but and so they hear that yeah we want that voice but then as what cliff said they ramp it up during the session yeah but i find they want to hear the voiceover casual uh the the selling casualness mm -hmm. of it because they'll pick you for that and then pump you up in the yeah. session yeah, yeah. i see um, them all yeah. the time yeah, yeah. jordan yeah. and so jordan yeah. your thoughts on that no, I completely agree. It's it's really hard and confusing for newer voice actors. You know, it's something I, I've learned the hard way. Where, um, and it's only gotten worse as far as the the what where where what they expect you conversational wise to audition as to book it and to and to also what what they expect on your demo. There's this deep raw level, not every spot, but at least a few where they want it genuinely like how I'm just talking right now, where I'm just like, you know, I'm just like. I'm just talking like like Cliff was like oh my god I like Cliff's vocal fry by the way. <laughs> but um but where you know if I'm just kind of talking like this and you might have a spot where you know you're just kind of talking off the cuff and you might book uh, a, a a burger spot like this and then you book the session because you you've trained and spend all this money and you're so good at it and then you get in the session and then they're like yeah punch this up a little oh can you a little bit more energy and then by the end when us voice actors who didn't maybe didn't book that gig who gave that really subdued read that was in the spec. Then you hear it on on a YouTube <laughs> pre-roll ad, and you're like, "What the hell? That's super announcery." I didn't. I, that's I. But the actor probably vo did it just as good as you did, or better, even more neutral, and they pumped it up in the session. It happens yeah. all the time. Not as a vo experienced voice actor, but I've seen it. Cliff's seen it in sessions. I've seen it. I've ran this question past uh, casting directors and agents. It's very common in commercials. So the expectations you have to get the skill really good, but they're just gonna more often than not hype it up in the session. It's kind of messed up because it's I like think, it feels like a waste sometimes. Like, why do I have the skill if we're not going to use it other than to get the job? It's, but, it's the basic. I think the one thing that we really have to stay away from here in 2020. Can you guys see that? It's a sign, yeah. right? Yeah. OK, this is not a sine wave. This is the conversational read killer for you and your family. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime you put in that, ah, that will kill the conversation thing songy, Sing right? songy. Uh, yeah but you know if, if you're <laughs> looking and uh try to avoid that it's so 2000 you know 1995 too melodic but, yeah that uh for you and you're if you're looking yeah uh. don't hit the pronouns don't hit the ands no, don't hit the ors no we just flatten that out um cliff knows better than anybody because automotive has such a range within itself so, oh, yeah. and, and as he directs uh, for his spots, uh, then it comes really comes down to what is the script, who is the dealer, what, what have they done in the past that's successful. Exactly. I'd say to help you find that conversational read, put a pre-read on it. Hey, Cliff, and you know, hey, Cliff, you know what, you know what, and then read, the, and then read the script. We'll keep it more conversational. Who are you talking to? Put that person's name. Uh, talk to your cousin, the one that you like. Yeah. Another tip is when you get your script for the first time, print it out, sit in a chair, read it in your head three times. Don't read it out loud. Never read the script out loud. When you're laying in bed at night and you're reading your James Mishner novel, you're reading it in bed, perfect interpretation in your head. Sit down, quiet, read it in your head three times. I've heard coaches say, stand in front of a mirror. I mean, that's crazy. You know, how many distractions do you need? <laughs> Hear it in your head first, three times, then read it. It's going to be a lot smoother, a lot more conversational. And I you already know where to go. Yeah. It's muscle memory. Yeah. And on that note, that's going to bring our <laughs> our Audio Masters Roundtable 2021 to an end. Thanks to uh, Jordan Reynolds and Andrew Feliciano, Uncle Roy Yokelson, and Cliff Zellman. All you guys are fabulous. I miss you all. We yes. all got to get together soon. You know, there's guys out there I don't like, but you guys, I like all of you. <laughs> We're in the club. Uh, we yeah, love yeah, you, too. <laughs> all righty. All right, George and I will be right back to wrap things up right after this. Wrap it up. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence the 17th. One of the things that I am most thankful for is a guy by the name of Patrick Tucker. 
Who's that? He wrote Secrets of Screen Acting. And it's a book that changed my life, both as an on-camera talent and as a voiceover talent. Uh, I had a chance to do a podcast with him, 300 episodes of a podcast that will add to your knowledge base like crazy, whether you're doing on-camera, voiceover, or both. It usually sells for $279, but for the next week, week and a half or so, it's yours for $149. So that's nearly 50% off, but I'm going to sweeten the deal. I'm going to give you the actual book, Secrets of Screen Acting, and the audio book for Secrets of Screen Acting. All of those things will benefit both your on-camera work if you do that, and certainly your voice work if that's all you do. Go to voheroes.com slash cyber. That's voheroes.com slash cyber. It's a limited time offer. Do so soon, and I hope that helps. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. VOBS.TV. And we're back to say goodbye. You know, it's December already, George. I mean, <laughs> believe it or don't, this is the worst, worst time of the year for me. I mean, it's great, but Thanksgiving, my anniversary on the 27th, my wife's birthday on December 5th, and my birthday on December 28th. It can be a very pressure fact time Oof. of the year here. Ugh. Oy vey. Is that yes, the appropriate it, time it, to say that? Exactly. On Monday, uh, I can say that. That's, that's true. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, next week on this show, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but we'll have another great guest on here, although it's going to be tough to beat the last yeah. hour. That's a great bunch of guys. Going out on uh, a high note. Uh, who are our donors this week? Oh boy, we got so many good ones. I got to go find them again because I got too many browser tabs open here. Why'd you close all those windows? Man, I got too much going on. Shauna, Shauna Pennington Baird. She was in the chat tonight. I'm hoping I'm saying her name right after all these years. <laughs> and yes, Icon Productions, Martha Kahn, Don Griffith, Stephen Chandler, Sandra Manwiller, Robert Leadham, Uncle Roy. You're yeah, still sending he's... us money? Okay. Yeah, what a guy. <laughs> <laughs> he knows we're going to say his name. That's why he sends and us money that's every why week. He sends it's, us... it's top of mind, folks. We say your name every episode. You never know where your name's going to stick in someone's brain. Yeah, I heard that name on the end of VOBS. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's ever said that they got cast that way. But anyway, Good it's worth it. It's worth Good a few nerd. bucks. Yeah. Uh, tonight, uh, we need to remind you that George and I do this as a profession, well, like our guest uh, tonight as well. If you need help with your home voiceover studio and you would like to work with Mr. Widom, where do they go? They go to... Well, especially this week, they got to go to georgethe.tech slash Cyber Monday, because when you see this, this airs right on Cyber Monday or the night before, yeah. and now's your chance to grab some deals at georgethe.tech slash cyber monday so that's where you go to find me dan where do they go to find you they go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com i know it's there somewhere come on so there it is Yay. right there homevoiceoverstudio.com happy to help you out love talking to people one-on-one -on -one and teaching you what you need to know to record properly uh, we need to thank our sponsors. Harlan Hogan's Voice Over Essentials. VO Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC, JMC Demos. Demos. 
Our thanks uh, to Jeff Holman for doing a great job in the chat room tonight. Lots of great questions, lots of people watching, and that we love having you here when we do it live. If you're watching in replay, just as good. You get the same information. Uh, our, <laughs> our one and only technical director is the one and only Sue Merlino. Thanks, Sue, for getting it done tonight. And Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. You know, getting into voiceover is not easy. Once you're in it, it's not easy. But when it comes to your audio, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. See you next week. Have a wonderful week.